I'm Dana Sosteger. After three decades in the marketing business and many years of being an entrepreneur, I've learned a thing or two about marketing. Join me as we talk about marketing, small business, and life in between. Welcome to My Weekly Marketing. On today's show, we have Tammy McKinney. Tammy is a leadership consultant who helps impact-driven executives, leaders, and business owners in her consulting business, Unlocking Your Best Life. Tammy and I met right after I moved to Austin. She's someone with a lot of wisdom and energy. But while running her business as a solopreneur, she was forced to go through some really hard stuff. She's going to talk today about how she continued to run her successful business while her life was coming unglued in some drastic ways. I love this episode because for anyone who runs a small business, this is real life. We all go through hard things, but if you're a solopreneur or have just a small team, hard times can be devastating, not only on a personal level, but a professional level as well. Wait until you hear about how Tammy got through this hard stuff, not only to survive, but to thrive. Hey, Tammy, welcome to the show. I'm so glad that you agreed to be on today. Thanks for having me. Uh, we talked a little last week about the topic of how to keep going when you're having struggles in your personal life. Yeah. Um, I thought this was so important for entrepreneurs to hear, especially if you're a solopreneur or if you're working out of your home where you've got family around. Um, I mean, life happens when you're running a business on your own or if you have a skeleton team and a crisis in your personal life can pull your business under, really. So I'm glad we landed on that topic. Um, I know in my own life, I've had to deal with aging parents and sick kids and um, sometimes even the same day. And it's, it's hard to keep business rolling when you have things that pop up. So tell us a little about your experience. What's it been like and what has made you decide to to look at that in terms of a, a topic? Yeah, thanks for having me again. I'm I'm really happy to be able to speak to your audience about this. I think that the reality is that all of us have stuff that's going to keep coming. <laughs> we all have life circumstances that are unpredictable, you know, pandemic anybody. And um yeah. and we have to be able to build that strength and that resilience. And especially as an entrepreneur, especially as a business owner, um, you know, we don't have the big corporation to say, hey, just take some time off or, uh, you know, here's here's a, some vacation days you can use and whatnot. And so from my po own personal experience, um, uh, you know, I ended a very long marriage right before the pandemic. Uh, then the pandemic hit. Uh, my my children struggle with serious mental health crisis, and they required 15 hospitalizations between uh, the youngest two in just the last, um, well, I would say that was over the last five, six years, um, but particularly in the last three years, it's been a lot of disruption um, requiring unexpected travel, unexpected expenses, unexpected mental, emotional, physical energy, uh, you know, to care for my kids. And as a mom, I have four kids, but, you know, it's, it's my number one priority. Building the business and serving my clients well and fulfilling all of that is absolutely a priority. But, you know, as a mom, my kids uh, needs for support are always going to come first. And so, that's where um, this topic hits really close to home, obviously, for me, as I've been building uh, my business and ex even expanding my business and then having to pivot my business, not only because of the pandemic, but also because of the divorce and also because of needing to take care of my kids in uh, ways that didn't even allow me to really leave the home like I had been doing before they got um, deep into the struggles. Right, right. So um, why don't you tell people about what you do and, and how that and how you've been kind of using all of this in your business? I think that that is particularly interesting to me is that uh, you not only just moved through it, but you, um, you know, you've used it. I mean, it, it, you're letting yeah. it serve you. Um, yes. Which I think is cool. 
Yeah. Well, thanks. Yeah. I, um, my background, uh, I was in corporate for many years and rose to a senior level um, management executive position pretty quickly. Uh, and then I, 20 years ago, took a beautiful severance and was going to take the summer off. And I ended up, um, uh, you know, never going back. And so I started just consulting and building a few businesses and whatnot. And then um, my son was 12, the first time he had to be hospitalized. And at that time, I was doing corporate leadership development, and I was doing private coaching, and I was running a health and fitness business. And um, it pretty quickly became obvious that, and in fact, the doctors even told me, you can't be more than 15 minutes away from him. You can't be away from his school or away from him. Um, during this season, and there's there's a lot of underlying stuff that, of course, have uncovered since then. But that piece of information um, led me to say, okay, I cannot count on going into corporate engagements anymore. I can't count on being on site with people anymore. And um, you know, <laughs> in my faith, I trust that God was preparing me for the pandemic because I was building my business, you know, from home online before all of that hit as well. And so. I pivoted from leadership consulting to figuring out how to coach online to ultimately uh, starting masterminds for women entrepreneurs to build their own businesses and um, and doing it all from home. And so it came out of necessity, but it combined, uh, you know, my health and wellness coaching, my life coaching, my my corporate executive experience, as well as my leadership development experience, all the things. And I was sort of forced to figure out branding, marketing, messaging operations of an online business. Um, and so I just want to encourage anybody listening, you know, you really only have to be about 10 steps ahead of the people that you can help. And I think that this is a big thing that we we do is we think, oh, we have to have it all figured out before I can help somebody else. And it's just not the case. I think that if you're feeling um, like there is somebody that you can help, you can probably make money doing it. I mean, obviously, we need mm -hmm. to develop mastery and we need to be able to to see where the needs really are. And we need to serve, you know, in our integrity to where we can actually help people get results. But but definitely everything that I've been through has brought me to where I am today, which is um, I do executive coaching online and in person. I go in and do corporate workshops and I also do public speaking, uh, you know, professional speaking. And so it, it's just such a gift to be able to look at it now and say, wow, you know, all of this has culminated not by my plans, but because of my circumstances and where I've had to pivot and shift. And then, of course, uh, you know, with the the divorce, it it, it raised my necessity <laughs> to be successful financially. Right. And then, oh, by the way, the kids kept having struggles, and I had to be able to spend a lot of, like I said, time and money supporting them. And so. What it has shown me, the biggest lesson, I guess, that it has shown me to go through this is that when you become clear, uh, not on the exact path that is laid out for you, but the direction that you should keep going and what you're called to do and what your personal mission sort of is, uh, you're going to find a way, right? And, and that everybody has something. I mean, every single person that I've ever coached has some significant life challenges that they've had to walk through. And, and it's just going to keep coming. I like to say this side of heaven, it doesn't get to be a perfect path, right? And so I oh, think true. that we get to trust that everything is part of our growth journey, part of our um, ultimate destination, I guess, if you will. But it's not about the destination. It's about trusting the journey and, and knowing who you're supposed to impact along the way and figuring out how with what you're given if that makes sense. Oh, it makes total sense. And I have like a hundred questions coming to my head right now too. So, <laughs> so now how have you, um, now when you're, when you're working with, as a coach, do you feel like you encounter this with other people as well? Do you feel like that this is kind of a universal that at some point every entrepreneur is going to hit a wall that they are struggling and that they have crises come up or crises come up? Or do you feel like, um, have you been able to just kind of guide your uh, co coaches? Is that like that? Yeah. <laughs> People yeah. you're coaching? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yes. And I think 
I think the the key is the acknowledgement that everybody has stuff that comes up, right? And and I would say that, you know, again, pandemic, anybody, like we all yeah. have things that have affected our life in unexpected ways. So whether you call it trauma or mental health or anxiety or unforeseen circumstances, whatever you want to call it, whether it is, you know, from your childhood or as you're building your business, we all have these things that come up that impact our confidence, they impact our consistency, they impact our clarity about who we are and what we're supposed to be doing. And I think that um, it, it is the most affirming thing to my clients when I can say, I've been there, I get it, I see you, you got this. Like, it's okay to question, it's okay to doubt, it's okay to, um, you know, feel a bit discouraged and defeated, but my job as a coach, as a mentor, as a, as a trainer even is to say, let's don't camp out there, right? Like let's look at mm -hmm. it and see what it's teaching you or see where you need to pivot. You know, Marie Forleo, she's an online business coach and she, she wrote a book called everything is figure outable. And that, that mm -hmm. mindset, just holding on to that mindset that everything is figure outable if you're committed to it. I was just having this conversation with somebody this morning over coffee. You know, if we if we really know that we have a purpose, if we know that we are building something that's going to make a difference in the world, and we all want to know that our life matters, right? We all have work to do. Mm -hmm then there, it is figure outable. There is a way, but we have to make a decision to figure it out. We have to make a decision to grow and to heal and do whatever it takes to keep moving towards what we're called to do or what we, we feel we're supposed to be doing in the world. And, and, you know, I think as entrepreneurs, we all want more income, more impact with more time freedom, <laughs> right? I mean, I right, think, right. you know, you're the marketing genius, but that's the three words that any entrepreneur could probably say, yes, I want that income, impact and time freedom. Maybe some don't want impact as much, but but I'm I'm, you know, believing that your listeners are my people, too. There are people they want to make a difference in the world. And so when you know that yeah. you have a difference yeah. to make in the world, everything is figure outable to quote again. That's Marie Forleo's, not mine, but yeah. I use it all the time. Right, right. Yeah, I use that as well too. So, um, and and I do believe that um, you know to keep going, we really do need to know the, our bigger why for sure. And it and it comes out in how we brand ourselves too. So I I definitely think that we all have um, we all have to know what our reason is, why we get up in the morning and keep going. So um, do you um, now? I every crisis is different, and every business is different. But do you have some steps that you work with? Um, that you walk somebody through when they are, say they have a, a you know, crisis, one of their kids or their spouse, or even them, if they land in the hospital or something like that. And how do you yes. keep your business going during that time? Or do you not? Or how is it that you feel as though the best way to handle that is? Yeah, thanks. That's a great question. So I will say that, um, it would be great to have a perfect plan for me to lay out for you. <laughs> <laughs> but some of the stuff that I think that have worked the best for me is when crisis hits, like actual crisis hits. For me, it was my 12-year-old son. I was literally on a, a first training call with my John Maxwell team. And he said, Mom, I can't stop thinking about killing myself. You need to get off the phone. And I'm like, yeah. what? What? What is yeah. what? Right. And so in that moment, I had no idea what to do. I had no idea this was coming. I had no idea. I mean, he's you know, had emotional struggles, but no radar at all about this coming up to be an issue. And especially at that moment. And so what I would say to that person that when something comes up and obviously there's, you know, severity in this situation, but when something unexpected like that comes up and it is a true crisis, you need to go into crisis management mode. And what that looks like is just reminding yourself to stay on the step that you're in. You know, for me, I was like, okay, what is the number one goal in this moment? And of course, this is hindsight. So don't don't think that I had this all figured out in that moment. But the, the number one goal in that moment was, okay, I need to keep this child safe. And, you know, in crisis, that's typically, you know, depending on the crisis, that's typically the number one thing is, is 
safety. Like if it's a crisis, there's something unsafe, right? <laughs> something happening, right. uh, you know, no matter what it is. And, and maybe it's a financial crisis or whatever, but how, how do you get to feel safe and, and the people that you care about or whoever's involved safe? And so maybe that is, um, you know, mental, emotional, financial, spiritual, relational, whatever it is, but, but feel safe first. And then, and then we start to move from, from safety to sort of a sense of security, knowing that it's okay to put our oxygen masks on and breathe and that, you know, and that the other parties involved are safe. And then from there, you get to start working on next steps. And so the next steps look like, okay, so what is in this situation, you know, what does healing look like? What does help look like? What does support look like? And so in the crisis itself, you kind of go through that progression, but stay on the next right step. Because if you allow yourself to catastrophize, right, everything that could go wrong in every way that you don't know how to help the situation, you're going to take yourself out emotionally, physically, mentally. Um, you know, I had to find ways in those early days to say, I've got to go to sleep. I've got to figure mm -hmm. out how to sleep. Like that was the next step after he came home from the hospital. Cause of course you, you know, you lose a lot of that sort of, you know, peace that things are going to be okay for a while. And so that's in the crisis, but preventatively to that, knowing that eventually something in your life is going to fall out of your control. Well, let's just say that maybe not total crisis, mm -hmm. Yeah. What we can do, and I heard, I can't remember who taught this, but in our business, the best thing we can do is figure out what absolutely has to be ours. And by that, I mean, as the leader of your company, whatever that looks like, what absolutely has to be done by you personally. And, and the sooner you figure that out as an entrepreneur, the better to be able to say, okay, this is something that I could delegate. This is something that I could automate or systematize. This is something that I could hand off to somebody else and mm -hmm. figure out what absolutely has to be Janice or has to be Tammy that shows up, you know, to do the thing. And so the way that I did that walking through this, I had met some other um, amazing coaches and built deep connections and trusting relationships with them. We did not know that's what we were doing at the time, but instead of saying, well, let's collaborate and build our business together. At one point, one woman said to me, and she was praying with me and helping me through some of the stuff she'd been through a divorce too. So that was all going on too. And she said to me, she said, Hey, I got your back. She said, mm -hmm. if you can't take a coaching client. Cause I'm like, how, how can I go get more clients? How can I build my business? What if I can't show up? What if I can't be there? What if, right. Mm -hmm. So yes, obviously mm -hmm. they were hiring me as their coach, but I found somebody else that was willing to say, and, and she never actually had to do this, but I, if you are incapable of showing up that day, I got your back. And I think this is part of the, everything is figure outable too, right. To be able to say, mm -hmm. okay, not if, but when something happens and I'm sick or I'm out of pocket, how am I going to keep going? And I think, um, and and you were part of this too. You know, I, I had a summit that I was doing, interviewing 25 people and rolling it out and I got COVID in the middle of it, right? And And mm -hmm. I went down. And so guess what? I had to delay launching the summit. Guess what? Nobody cared, right? Like it was pre-recorded. I, I, I drew it. Yeah, I drew it out a little mm -hmm. bit longer. Um, and you know, maybe I didn't get the results that I was hoping for, but I still got a lot of great results out of doing the thing that I planned. So it's just holding on to that idea that, that, you know, where there's a will, there's a way, as they say, in and that stuff is going to come up. And so preparing yourself as best as possible, like with systems, things that can be automated, backups that you can have, things you can delegate. And then also knowing that if it's just not possible, it's not just it's just not possible. And people will understand as long as that in your integrity, you're not just, you know, flaking, <laughs> I guess. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And and people do understand, but oh, there's so much good stuff you just said. I mean, one of the things that um, I think that really resonated with me that I don't ever think about is reaching out to people in your own field that can yeah. take over in a pinch or that can help you out in a pinch because, um, you know, I think a lot of times we start a business where we're all pretty independent and especially if you're on your own, you're a solopreneur, um, you know, and suddenly you just can't work. 
um, you know, first of all, having that plan in place and having at least something in the back of your mind or be, having a VA or a virtual assistant or someone you can call, call on to take some of the load away and really focusing on what you o- you and only you can do. I think that's yeah really, really important. But um, but I, I love that you reached out to other people in your field to, to just kind of um, pick up some of the slack because, yeah, we're all going to be in that and, and just this... I, you know, I think this band of sisterhood, it, I love it. It just, <laughs> or yeah. brotherhood or whatever, you know, it, it just, yeah. we, we need each other. And um, that's part of being a human being. And that's, that's definitely part of it. So gosh, that's, that's so powerful. Um, Thank you. The other thing I was just going to say that? about that too, you know, when all of this happened with my son, like I had no idea. And so I just, I just started to really consider and pray because I do, you know, what, who do I call? Who do, where do I even start with this crisis with my son? And, and I had remembered another mom that I hadn't talked to in years whose son had gone through a similar thing. And I just picked up the phone and I said, Hey, I hope this isn't an imposition. I know that you went through something similar. I need help. I have no idea where to start. And she gave me some numbers to call, some things to consider. And, and, you know, mental health is, uh, mental illness is off the charts. I mean, before the pandemic, it was one in five. It's now between one in three and one in four. And so that means that most of our listeners today know somebody are there or, or are themselves having some sort of mental health struggle. And so it doesn't have to be a full-blown, you know, suicidal event or psychosis or something drastic, but, but anxiety and depression, I mean, it gets in our way and it gets in the way of our loved ones. And so if it's not you, it's a loved one that's struggling. And so, you know, this whole idea of destigmatizing it and opening it up so that people you know, no, without exploiting my children, you know, it is difficult to talk about it because my children may hear this and they don't love me to talk about it, but I've got their permission to talk about it because Mm -hmm. it's so important to know you're not alone. It's the same thing, no matter what your crisis is, you know, especially going through the divorce, especially going through the hospitalizations all during the pandemic, I felt very, very, very alone, very alone. The people that were closest to me were so in their own stuff because of the pandemic that I didn't feel like I could reach out or they didn't know what was going on. Most people didn't even know I got divorced and I've been here 20 years, you know, until after the pandemic. Mm-hmm. And they were like, Hey, 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 what, what started seeing pictures, you know, <laughs> where, where'd he go? And, and, you know, it's okay on some level, it was kind of nice to not have it be such a big public thing, but also um, it, it was very lonely. And so my encouragement to everybody is no matter what your struggle is, there is a Facebook group for you. There is a, there is a mm-hmm. phone number you can call. There is somebody that you might remember that went through a certain thing. Right. And so I tell everybody, like, if you're, if you know anybody in crisis, have them call me. And I get calls sadly, at least every other week from a parent whose child is struggling and, and, you know, I don't, I don't take it on. I don't do everything for them. I just give them the next right step based on where they're at. And usually that just means calling a crisis hotline or plugging them into a hospital or a resource because that's, we can't take on everybody's stuff. You know, I can't take on everybody's stuff, but I don't want to waste right. the fact that I've had to go through it to help somebody else. And so we need to be able to really, really, really ask for help as well as give it wherever, you know, we've gone through something and come out the other side. Oh, so good. So good. Yeah. And, and that is so true. And, and oftentimes I think these things really do blindside us. I mean, in my experience with my own kids and, and um, yeah. both of them from time to time struggle with some mental health issues. And, and um, there was one episode where I totally, I mean, I totally didn't see it coming and it yeah. was a serious thing. And um, you know, and I, I was able to get through it. Like, I, I don't remember it, honestly, because it was such a, a difficult time. And like you said, it's a lot of prayer. It's a lot of um, taking it one day at a time, one step at a time and going from fire to fire to fire to put them out and it yeah. just keep going, you know, and, yeah. and um, it does it truly make us stronger in the long run for sure. Yeah. Um, so, um, you know, in a blog post that you had written a while ago, um, you talk about giving yourself permission. And I love this because we as entrepreneurs don't do that. How do you feel like, how do we give ourselves permission in a crisis? Um, And we, we just don't do that, especially well on a good day. (laughs) But it's so important, especially when, when life is coming at you and it's hard and, and you're just trying to 
keep your head above water? Yeah, I think I think that's a really good question, because I think during my and I've had so many friends tell me lately, you know, I'm about to be 55 and they're like, oh, I'm in my midlife crisis. And I said, I said, let's reframe that a little bit. You're in your midlife transition. (laughs) Right. And and I think that we get to acknowledge at some point we wake up and we say, who am I? I've been raising four kids. I was married for 30 years. I used to be a corporate executive. Whoops. I used to have a fitness business, right? Like I I used to do all of these things, but underneath it all, who am I now? And that's sort of the midlife crisis term, right? And so to answer your question, I think Mm -hmm. that the most important thing is to say, if you're asking yourself, who am I now? Or how do I handle this? Or why do I feel so badly? I mean, if you're feeling shame, regret, resentment, bitterness, anger, frustration, all of those emotions that are negative in some way, shape or form, we get to give ourselves permission to feel those feelings and ask ourselves, where is that coming from? Because I think all of the, you and I have talked about this in the past year, Janice, but you know, if you ask the self, yourself the question like, have I lost myself or who am I now? If you're asking yourself those questions, you get to give yourself permission to say, well, I'm not lost. I'm still this amazing freaking human being, regardless of what I've gone through. <laughs> But you also get to say, who am I now? And who am I becoming now? And so I think the idea of giving yourself permission, I don't know the best way to do it. But if anybody hearing this, like if you are having any of those feelings, like I say, bitterness, regret, resentment, shame, it's okay to feel that and say, where is that coming from? And then to step back and say, that is part of my experience. That is part of my life. That is part of what I've been through. But that is not who I am. And that is not who I am becoming now. And so giving yourself permission to do sort of that deeper work of what do I believe about myself, the world, other people now, what are my top five values? You know, what is it that I need to heal from my past? You know, I still feel this all the time. I mean, I was in my marriage a very, very long time. And there's things that still come up that I'm like, Ooh, you know, why am I worried? I started dating last year, you know, like, why am I worried this person isn't texting me back? Like he hasn't given me any reason to, you know, and it's, it's Mm -hmm. stuff that needs healed from the past. Right. And so I think that we, we have to constantly give ourselves permission as an entrepreneur in your marketing, in your branding. I bet everybody listening to this has a million marketing strategies that they've either tried or thought about. They've wasted time and money on them. They feel like because they didn't work. Ask yourself, what really didn't work? Was I not confident enough? Was I not consistent enough? Was I not sure about it? Because it's typically not the strategy that isn't working. It's typically us getting in our own way, right? Getting in our way, the the fear of failing, fear of rejection, fear of not being good enough, fear of, you know, all the imposter syndrome stuff, right? So we get to give ourselves permission to sort of back up and say, and you know this from a branding standpoint, who am I really? What do I really stand for? What am I really trying to do in the world? And then put those blinders on to everything else and just be who you authentically are. And I know that word is overused, but it takes work to figure out who you authentically are. I have to work with executives and leaders on this all the time. Authentic leadership is really about taking a step back and saying, you know, am I doing everything for the bottom line or do people really know who I am? Because people follow people that they feel are trustworthy, right? People we know, like, totally. and trust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That they can connect with, for sure. Yeah. 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 I I have a, a, a business coach I've worked with for years and he's always saying there are no mistakes. There's only lessons learned. And I think that's especially true with ourselves because, um, you know, like I think... Uh, I've heard, excuse me, heard you say in the past that, you know, we, we have this idea of perfection and that's how we compare ourselves. And it's just so unfair because nobody, nobody measures up to perfection. So whether or not we're running a business or, or like you said, doing your marketing or whatever it is, um, we can be so dang hard on ourselves that I think we're our own worst enemies so much of the time. And that really plays in. And I didn't realize how much it did. It really played in with how I was running my own business. And um, even just like uh, being a, a wife and a mother to, you know, it, yeah. it, it, we just have this, um, I don't know, this ideal in our head. And if we 
don't meet that, um, never mind how far we've come. But if we're we're not there yet, then we want to give up and throw in the towel. And definitely, it's true with marketing. You know, I mean, you can have a, a lot of different promotions, just don't go the way you want them to. But if you look at how, how much you've learned in it and how, how much you can take away, then you really end up, I mean, that, that just is such a boost for you. It, it really ends up being a benefit in the long run, just to look at yeah. it differently. Well, you know this, and we've talked about it, right? All marketing is testing. And all yeah. parenting is testing and all weight loss is right. testing, right? Like, yeah. like we don't know what we don't know about what's going to work and what isn't. And, and, you know, I'm part of John Maxwell's team. Sometimes you win, sometimes you learn. And, and, and that, mm-hmm. if nobody, if you yeah. haven't read the book, you know, mindset, I mean, it's basically the growth mindset versus this perfectionist mindset. And you have to, as an entrepreneur, stay in, not just have, but stay in that growth mindset because, there are a million strategies out there that may work for somebody else really well, but there's so many variables that it may not work for you. And, and including what we're talking about today, your own life circumstances. I mean, you know, one great marketing strategy is to be on stages and speaking all over the place. Well, I couldn't do that when I couldn't leave the house. I had to figure out other ways to reach my audience. Right. And so that's when I started my Tuesdays with Tammy, you know, it's a Facebook live I can do for 30 minutes. And I had to have somebody tell me a coach I paid a lot of money to surely you can make 30 minutes a week to go live. Cause I'm like, I can't do anything. I've got all this crisis going on in my life. And she said, surely you can find 30 minutes a week to do a Facebook live. And so I said yes to that. And, and probably 400 episodes later, 30 minutes, every Tuesday at noon, I go live. Right. And so it, was it perfect? No. You know, my favorite story. Can I tell my favorite story about my Facebook sure, live? Please do. Yes. Uh, so I think it was about the third or fourth one. And I was literally at the um, my son's therapist office. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to try to do this Facebook Live thing from someplace besides my home because he was in his session. So I went and found a quiet pay- place in the in the office building because it was like six o'clock at night and I did this Facebook live and uh, my neighbor texted me afterwards and he said, Hey, I saw your live. That was great. And I'm like, really? Did you like it? He said, yeah, except you look naked. (laughs) 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 And I said, I look naked. What are you talking about? He said, go look at it. It was a hundred degrees here in Texas. And I had on a tank top and my long blonde hair was covering the, the straps of the shirt and the way that I had the angle, it looked like I had no shirt on. And he said, he said uh, you're going to get quite the following. I said, that is not the following I want. <laughs> <laughs> and so oh, I, I left love it, it up there. I left it up there. And you know, a good friend of ours, she huh. does on camera confidence stuff and she uses it in all of her training. I said, feel free to use it. I'm not ashamed because what it shows you is that, you know, sometimes you win, sometimes you learn. And I had to learn, you know, not to wear that shirt and not to, you know, all the things <laughs> that I've had so many faux pas with tech. We all have so many faux pas with tech. My oh, Facebook right. lives still only work like 50% of the time. I have to stop and start because the internet or Facebook or somebody kicks me out, right? And so I'm actually going to move that platform probably off of Facebook completely because of that. But, you know, we just, we got to do what we got to do to figure out what works for us. So thank you for letting yeah. me share that. It's a favorite story by most people to hear uh, that. But yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah. It's all I, tested. I, it's It really is. Yeah, it's a perfect example of how, um, you know, sometimes all the best laid plans. uh, I mean, who would have thought? I I wouldn't have thought about that. You know, it's like, like you said, you have the long hair, it's covering up the straps. Um, Yeah. yeah, So that that is hilarious. Love it. well, this has been really helpful. I really appreciate you taking the time and, and t- telling your own experiences too. I know that, um, you know, uh, I've known you for years now and, um, you know, I know that you've had some, some struggles and like we all have and, and, um, you yeah. know, you just are coming out of it stronger than ever. And I just, um, yeah. I can see that and, and see that it's so fun to see your business take off too and, and expand. Um, so I appreciate, appreciate you coming on and telling your story. How can people uh, get in touch with you and where can we reach out to you and find out more about you and your business? Yeah. So my business is unlocking your best life. 
dot com. Uh, you know, links to everything are there. Um, the Tuesday with Tammy, and like I said, it may be moving, but right now it's www.tuesdaywithtammy.com. I go live at noon every Tuesday Central Time, and that's a great way to kind of interact and and get to know me a little bit more. I think that, um, you know, there's something there for everybody, even if you're not my ideal client. And, and I think that as entrepreneurs, we get to, we get to acknowledge that, you know, I had a pastor that used to say, put the cookies on the bottom shelf so everybody can reach them. Right. And, and I think that, um, yeah, as entrepreneurs, I mean, we have that gift to do that. And I think that, that this is one thing that I coached a lot of the entrepreneurs on, you know, if you're putting content into the world that adds value to people and, they can't afford to work with you. You can just still point them to your free stuff. And people tell me often, they're like, you give way too much away. And I said, I don't really, because I'm still making a difference in people's lives. But the people that really want the results that are really ready to go to the next level, I can charge them more money. Not that I'm like the highest coach out there by any means, but you can charge your worth. You can charge your value for your time when you know that you've got stuff available that can help people that aren't quite ready or people that can't quite afford it yet. And so um, for any entrepreneur out there, I just encourage you. I mean, that's why Janice is doing this. She's, she's putting the cookies on the bottom shelf for us. She's putting her podcast out there to reach people. Yeah. 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 And the reality is that many times I, I I have something in what I call the trail to the sale and many times people will hop off that trail a while and then they'll, they'll think back to something that um, you had said, or they had a download they had received or something that was highly relevant in a problem that they're coming up with now. And so they hop back on the trail and I've even done that in my own life. I follow people for years before buying something from them because when you need it, you need it, but not before that. So yeah, I love that. Yeah. And I, I, I've joined your Tuesdays with Tammy. They're they're, um, You've got excellent, excellent advice for all of us. So Yeah. um, yeah. So yeah, check it out. The the links to all of that will be in the show notes. Um, Tammy, I just really appreciate you coming on today. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Well, there you have it. I sure hope you enjoyed today's episode. Tammy has a free guide called 21 Mindsets for Success. You can find the link to that in my show notes at myweeklymarketing.com forward slash two. 